Okay, we want to take you live right now to Virginia, where officials are addressing the fatal shooting of those two journalists. Let's listen in. A lot of questions have been asked about uh, the employment situation uh, of Vester Flanagan, also known as Bryce Williams. So I wanted to put it together in a statement, and we will distribute copies of the statement. Uh, and uh, I want to thank the WDBJ-7 team for coming out and uh, joining us for this uh, because we're all in this together. Uh, I'm going to read the statement, be glad to take questions uh, and uh, about anything uh, regarding uh, what happened yesterday. Uh, Vester Flanagan was employed by WDBJ-7 as a reporter between March 2012 and February 2013. He applied for the position using the air name of Bryce Williams. As part of WDBJ-7 standard policy and protocol for background checks, uh, we uh, received only positive references. Uh, Flanagan's job performance and his interaction with his co-workers led his manager to place Flanagan on a succession of performance improvement plans. Only slight improvement was noted each time. Flanagan was placed on a final warning in December 2012 for failure to check his facts in a news story and generally for poor, poor news judgment. In January 2013, he accused one of the news photographers here of making trouble for him by questioning a decision to go on private property in pursuit of a story. Uh, at that point, in, uh, in a meeting with uh, a manager and HR, he raised some concerns with HR of perceived unfairness, and those uh, accusations or concerns were immediately investigated and found to be without merit. Uh, shortly after that, he confronted an anchor in the hallway, uh, an anchor who was assigned by a producer to review one of his stories, and he was uh, not happy about that. At that point, uh, management made the determination that it was the appropriate time to separate him from the company. On February 1st of 2013, two news managers and the HR manager notified Flanagan of the decision to terminate his employment. He reacted angrily, telling them that they would have to call the police because he was going to make a stink and it was going to be in the headlines. Uh, the HR rep uh, then called 911. Employees had been notified to give Flanagan space to clean out his desk. At, once at his desk, Flanagan attempted to reach the corporate CEO uh, without success. At that point, the police arrived and escorted him from the building. On the way out, he handed a wooden cross to the news director, uh, who was uh, at that time Dan Dennison, and he said, you'll need this. He also made a derogatory comment to Adam Ward, uh, the news photographer whom we lost yesterday, as he left. The only contact between WDBJ-7 and Flanagan after that were routine calls to HR about termination benefits. Shortly thereafter, Flanagan filed a complaint of harassment and discrimination with the Equal Opportunity Employment Commission. WDBJ-7 responded that his claims of mistreatment were unfounded and uh, the EEOC denied the claim based on all of the evidence that we provided. He later filed a, a civil action in local court in Roanoke. That action was dismissed. In two and a half years since the termination, WDBJ-7 employees reported seeing Flanagan in public places and there were no confrontations. He was never seen following employees and he did not attempt to enter the offices of WDBJ-7. All claims of mistreatment were investigated by senior management, by our HR representative, Monica Taylor, who is here with Kelly and me today, and with our legal counsel, Victor Cardwell, of the firm of Woods Rogers. Uh, all of these investigations determined that no reasonable person would have taken any of the cited instances as discrimination or harassment. As all of you know very well, we're all trained to stand in front of the camera, hold camera presence, and ignore people who come around us, because uh, generally they're just looking to see what's going on. And I think, you know, in that case, um, you know, certainly from the video that aired on our morning show, we saw Adam go down and then we heard a scream. So there's probably some indication that at the very last moment, Allison may have no, see, recognized what was going on. Adam probably did not since his back was turned to the shooter. I think they had very little notice and I think they probably were not 
they were they were not even aware but we we understand that the authorities are still investigating they're still trying to put together a crime scene as to what exactly happened and I guess we'll know more then we have been listening to a live presser being held in Roanoke Virginia where officials are addressing the fatal shooting of these two journalists Allison Parker and cameraman Adam Ward who were tragically shot and killed while on air during a live broadcast Wednesday morning the shooter Vester Lee Flanagan was a former employee at WDBJ7 we know he had appeared on air using the name Bryce Williams that is until he was fired two years ago and today as we heard there were a number of warning signs since his firing Jeff Marks general manager of the station said he reacted angrily to the termination of employment this included him handing a cross to an employee saying quote you'll need this he also filed a complaint of harassment after termination but HR determined that no reasonable person would have interpreted any of his claims as harassment Today, Mark stressed uh, he's proud of the company's hiring track record, adding, quote, one's going to slip through the cracks every once in a while, but even he is not entirely sure how to answer what happened in this case, as they didn't identify that the gunman had any mental health issues. They did mention going forward, if they're doing a live shot, the cops said they will be there to help them out. They said as journalists, they will do their best to cover what happened fairly and accurately. And so now they're focusing on the results of his actions and the loss of Allison and Adam and the station's bond with the community. And you can see that support in the ribbons pinned to everyone there today. Those ribbons representing Adam and Allison, the maroon standing for Virginia Tech. The teal was simply Allison's favorite color. Heartbreaking news. We'll continue to follow it closely. We're heading to break here, but we will have more headlines for you next as One American News continues.